Hello everyone, and welcome to the third video in this tutorial series so far. So, so far we got the basic project set up, we have our build system, and now I'm thinking it's about time we actually do some coding and get a window to show up. So first we're just going to write some, just boilerplate code getting the window working, and then we're going to abstract it out into its own header file and get it all cleaned up to make it easier to use. So to begin, we gotta include our our JLFW files here. So we just include JLFW3.h, and we can actually use JLFW since our build system is all hooked up for this. So before we can do anything with JLFW, we have to call this initialize function, and this will essentially just prepare the library to be used, which is exactly what we need. And then, when we're done with the windows, we have to terminate the library. This is not a huge deal if you don't do it, because the OS will clean it up anyways, but it's a good practice to clean up resources when you use them. So with the library initialized, I can create a JLW window pointer, and I'll call it a window. And then, we can create a window like so. So it asks for a width and height of the window, title, and a pointer to the monitor, and a context sharing. So I'll just do a little standard size. I'll call it tutorial. Now in this case we don't care what monitor it's displayed on so I'll pass it null pointer and we don't care about context sharing right now either so I'm going to put null pointer in there. And that'll be enough to get a window to show up but we have to remember we should destroy the window and again, when we when we actually terminate the context, it will destroy the window for us. But again, it's just a good practice. And just so you guys are aware, I am emitting like the error checking code, but we will be adding that soon. So with the window here, we have to actually make its context current. And this just makes it so I can actually initialize the OpenGL functions in the thread. So to specify all of that, I can actually include our gladgl file, and we can call gladloadgl. And this takes in a function loading library, and luckily jlfw provides one for us, and we're going to use jlfw get proc address. And internally this will end up calling internally for all the opengl functions and figuring out the actual function pointers and they will be assigned to some little macros we can use. So for example, gl clear, this is actually defined as a macro. So if I put in some numbers and head to it, you can see that it gets defined right here. And when you call that gl low, this gets changed from point into null, which you'll just get a memory access violation, I'm pretty sure. But this ends up setting all the pointers for these. So that's um we need to do. So at this point, we have our OpenGL functions loaded. So what we gotta do now is gotta start a game loop. So we can check if the window should close, like so, and run this loop while we shouldn't close. So when you hit that red X button, it will set this flag to true, and it will break out of the loop, and then it will end up destroying the context and everything like that. Now for this to actually do stuff correctly, we have to pull the events so it can actually detect when we do that. And then we have to swap buffers, which is for the rendering. And just from that, we'll be able to get a window shown up on here. So let's let it build. And we can see we get our window to show up here. And it works almost exactly how you'd expect it to. Hit the cross and it closes out. So since we actually have OpenGL loaded here as well, something else we can do is we can actually, let's say, let's set the clear color and let's make it a, a nice red color. In, in OpenGL, color values are provided as floats within the range 0 to 1, so 1 just means you're just providing full brightness and 0 means you're not doing any. So I'm using full red, no blue, no green I mean, no blue and all alpha. Then to actually clear the buffer, I can call geo clear with the color buffer flag. Color buffer bit. And that will c 
clear the screen to be that color we specified. And as you can see, we get a nice red screen. Now you'll notice there's some resizing issues and that's some we will cover in a later video. But for now, it's pretty easy to get all that hooked up. Now, this is a little messy to manage. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to create a couple files and we're gonna abstract this away. So all we have to worry about is, hey, we create a window and it will handle all this context in the back end. So for the header, I'll just call it window.h. So we're just gonna specify how we want this all to be laid out. So I'm gonna include a couple things here. So I'm going to include the utility file. We're going to end up using a standard pair in one of the functions. And then I'm also going to include jlfw for obvious reasons. So just for completion's sake, I'll put it in a tutorial namespace just so it's, you know, it's obvious it'll be our own code. So we're going to specify our window class. And I'll make it final since I don't want to make subclasses of it, but again, it's your code, up to you if you want to allow subclassing. So we're going to make our public functions. So we're going to have our standard, a default constructor, which will be very nice to have. We're going to create another constructor, which takes in that width and height, and our conch chart pointer for the title. And here I'm going to actually emit the when the monitor and context share since I do not plan to use that. At some point we may specify things for monitors, but for now I don't think we need it. We need a destructor, and this will have to be set virtual if you do plan to do inheritance on this. And again, I don't plan to do that. Next I'm going to specify our copy constructor, and by specify I mean I'm just going to straight up delete it. Because I'm believing that it's, it's just going to cause problems if we allow copy in for the window. I will specify the move constructor in assignments, so we can at least do that kind of stuff with it. So let me finish writing this out. So I disable deleting, just I disable copying by deleting the functions. And I'm going to specify the move constructors here. Operator sign window other. And again, we're going to find a lot of these in a CPP file. So that deals with the constructors and all that. So let's get our private member variables real quick. For now, all we're going to have is our actual window pointer. And for just this, I'll specify as just M for member, and I'll just call it a generic name like handle. And I'll just have it default to no pointer, so that way when we do our default construction, if we decide to, it won't end up doing some undefined behavior when we try calling destructors or moving operations. So that'll just keep that a little more predictable. Next, I'm going to provide a couple inline functions. So for example, one to actually retrieve our handle since odds are I would have missed a lot of things in this, so it would be helpful to be able to retrieve that. For example, if we hook up callbacks or something, I feel that would be a bit of a pain to implement through this interface we're using. So providing that option is nice. Next, I'll make a function so we can make our context current. And this would just call that gfw function with our window parameter. So you can imagine what that's going to do. So anything that we actually have to pass in that window handle for is what I'm going to pass into here. So we have our make context current. We need one to swap the buffers. If I can learn how to type, we can swap our buffers with the handle. Another one, if the window should be closed, this would probably get deleted in the future since we're going to end up using some event systems to handle this. But I can write the code to test if we should be closing the window. 
And then this last one's more of a utility function for later, but it's going to return a standard pair of ints. And this is going to be used to get our window size. So the way JLFW has it, us do this, and a lot of things in OpenGL actually, we have to specify some kind of storage. In this case, I'm just going to provide W and H for width and height. And we're going to get the frame buffer size. So this is the actual size of our drawing area, which usually when we get size, that's what we're referring to. So I want to get it for the handle and store it in these width and height variables. Then after we have them, I just want to return them in a standard pair. And that gets our header file basically done. So let's add our CPP file and implement some of these other details. So obviously, first thing we got to do, include our window header. All right, so something else this is going to actually do for us is it's going to actually allow us to do some more, just some more stuff. So one of the examples is automatically creating and destroying our context for OpenGL. Well, not OpenGL, GLFW. So we don't have to worry about initializing the internal window system we're making right now will handle that. So I am going to provide some login here since I do plan to implement our error checking in here. So I'll just do that real quick and I'll open up our tutorial namespace. So I'm going to make a static size T variable here. And this will store however many windows we happen to have open. And by default, we don't have any open. So what I'm going to do, just to make it easy, is I'm going to copy these function signatures and I'm going to quickly get all of these decorated how it wants. So we deleted these so we don't need to specify them. That's just a default one so we don't have to do anything there. So let me just expand all of these. All right, so now we can specify what all of these should do. So when we're first creating a window, at least, when we create a window, we want to check are any windows in existence right now. So we're going to check that, or specifically if there aren't any. So if no windows are created and are in this constructor, then we should go through the effort to actually create this open, this GLFW context for us. So first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to set JLFW's error callback because it does provide this for us. So we can provide it a function to call if something happens. And OpenGL also provides this kind of functionality, but we're not to that point yet. And I'm just going to use a Lambda for this. So it takes in an error code and cards chart pointer for the description. And I'm going to just copy paste it because I'm horrible at spelling. So if some kind of error occurs, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna feed it to speedlog. And I'll say GFW error. And it will be two parameters which would be filled in with this. Now for the error code I do want to display in hex. So I'll put this little thing in here. Number this pound symbol provides a zero x in front of it and actually providing the x makes it hexadecimal. So that's the reason for the syntax there. Then I can provide it the error code and the description. So if we get some kind of error in GLFW, we will know about it in our console. After this, we can, we can do our GLFW initialize, but we have to also remember that, hey, this might fail. So we got to check if it doesn't initialize correctly, we can also feed out a speed log error. Now just say go to initialize GLFW. And at this point, we have GLFW initialized, assuming no errors occurred. So we can just increment this count variable so we can keep track of that. So what we could do now is we can actually hook up the window. So we can create our window here like so, and I can pass our width and height 
enter it, pass in the title. And these, since we didn't provide it, I'll just fill them in right here. But again, this is something else that can fail. So if this isn't a valid pointer, then hey, this failed. And again, I'll just feed it to speedlog. So let's just say we failed to create window. Make it self-explanatory. Maybe we're going to expand this whole area system, making it a little more usable. For example, putting debug breaks and that kind of business in here. So that's all we really have to do to get the basic window working. So when we want to destroy a window, we check first if the handle is valid. If the handle is valid, then we can go and destroy it. Now, I don't believe this is actually necessary to do, but again, it just makes me feel more comfortable. Now, after we destroy it, I am going to set this to null pointer, just to avoid some potential weird issues. And then I can decrease our current number of windows. And then, upon destroying the window, I can say, are we back down to zero windows? And if so, we have no reason to keep this context alive anymore. So we can terminate our context. And then I will set our error callback just to null pointer, just to clean that up. So that's going to destroy in Windows, but now we have to specify what we should do for moving. And I never really know a great way to do this, so what I end up doing is I just end up calling the operator equal directly like this. Which internally the compiler's likely to optimize away anyways, but again, this is just is how I do it, and there's probably a million better ways to do it. So when we want to move, I want to make sure we destroy whatever window we currently have. And again, I normally advise against doing that, but since we specifically written the window destructor to handle this, I think it's okay to do. So then we have to assign our handle to whatever the other was. And then we have to invalidate the other. Then lastly, we just have to return a reference to this object. And this will handle the basic window handling for us. So to clean this up, and do note I don't actually provide like the glad loading or anything like that. So that's something I still have to do out here. So now I can include our window header file, like so. So what I can do instead is I can create a tutorial window pretty easily. Equal and then I can pass in the width height and that. And it will handle all of this for us. So when we create the window, one thing we have to remember to do is make its context current. We still have to load OpenGL functions. Now we actually written a function to make that easy. Window should close. You have to be pull events. We did not write any function for that. Window, we can swap our buffers. And then the actual destroying of context and everything, that's handled with our implementation. So now we have a pretty straightforward way to create a window and it will nicely handle other windows as well. So three videos in and we finally got a window display and I think that's pretty cool. So in the next video I think we're going to either clean up our login a little bit, get some more useful information out of it, or we can get to actually trying to draw a basic triangle on here. And odds are we'll probably head towards the triangle part since having stuff displays fun. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video when I decide what we're going to do. Goodbye.